Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I've got the all new A6 Gel Resolution 9. And a huge thanks to A6 for sending me a pair of the Gel Resolution 9. However, this video is not sponsored by them. They're not seeing before you. All opinions, of course, are still my own. However, the video is sponsored by PowerStep, but more on them later. Now, starting off in the uppers, the Gel Resolution 9, once again, is an entire upper of urethane. The urethane on the Gel Resolution 9 is just a little bit more buttery than on previous models. I will say the uppers do take about one or two times on court to really get to the point where you can tie them down easily without having to go into each individual strand and get them knotted down. Now, the little slip knot that they have here in the forefoot does help out a lot, as well as it helps out a lot for containment and pivoting power. Um, however, just don't be surprised when you first take them out if they are a little bit harder to cinch down in the forefoot because that does go away. But what I find really interesting about the uppers of the Gel Resolution 9, there actually is a layer underneath that urethane where you get a mesh weaving, a really tight mesh weaving underneath of that. And then that comes all the way up into the tongue where you actually get these hexagonal patterns into the tongue where it's just kind of made it like this really rugged, almost ballistic material in the tongue. So if you are someone who's a really extreme toe dragger or someone that really lays down on the inside or medial side and your tongue gets exposed, actually the urethane as well as just the textile layer of the uppers the gel resolution 9 are really wear resistant to that sliding and abrasion. And on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 second highest grit sandpaper, and the Dremel barely even makes a scuff on that urethane. So like I said, in terms of the ultimate shoe for upper durability, there really is nothing better out there right now. And so with that being said, that brings me to the first leg of the universal rating system, which is containment. Remember the universal rating system, eight categories, five points each total out of 40. Now for containment, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Number one, I think the containment, the lockdown is really excellent. The Dyna wall on the outside of it just has ridiculous side to side containment. We'll talk about that when we talk about the midsole. And even the heel counter, there's more bunting and padding around the heel counter. So your heel sinks into there more, so you're not getting the heel slipping issues you did. Plus it's a real textured material in there, so your sock kind of interacts with that too, which adds in a little bit more of the containment. I would have given them a five out of five However, if you are a really high volume foot, putting a very high volume orthotic in there, you'll probably want to use the runner's knot. And if you want to do that, you may want to get a longer lace, which just doesn't come with the stock version of the shoe. You just got to go buy a longer lace. So I would say on their own, the lockdown is fine. It's just if you want to get that elite lockdown, if you are that really specific foot type, you're going to want to get that longer lace. And that's the only thing that took a point off of them. And getting into the midsole teardown, this is another entire bed of Asics Flight Foam, which is their proprietary lightweight EVA foam. Now you do have gel right here under the ball of the foot as well as here under the heel. However, right above the gel is actually a little bit more of a dense material under there. So you really can't feel that really soft gel under there. Uh, I think it's just more for forgiveness when you're really crash landing down. It is the same type of system, kind of that trustic system they had on the gel resolution eight, where you've got the external heel counter combined with the internal heel counter, and that goes all the way around the shoe, then the dyno on the outside. So even though there isn't a shank on the inside, the foam foam is all being held out by an external truss on the shoe. And I could really feel that when I was landing really hard on a serve, you could feel that scaffolding around the shoe, really cradling your medial and lateral arch. So this is one of those things I really like on the gel resolution nine versus other shoes where they don't have the internal shank. So there's able to be more foam and the foam is able to be more forgiving, but you're still getting all of that arch support that you would having a really rigid shank right underfoot. And looking at that midsole foam on the bounce height test, I got 30 centimeters in the heel versus 34.5 in the forefoot. And I really think that's interesting because I do think it's this shock absorbing foam here in the heel that got a lower bounce test versus then in the forefoot where you just have the gel right here underneath of there. And if you look at that flight foam versus something like Nike Phylon, which is another EVA compound, that got 29 centimeters on the bounce height test. So I, I really think with Asics, they were looking to put a little bit more shock dampening and energy dampening into the heel of that shoe because in the forefoot, got way higher. So you can just kind of see kind of where the priorities were in different parts of the shoe. On the flip side of that test though, if you look at the launch capability of the Gel Resolution 9 on the accelerometer test, this thing was peaking out at about 84 to 104 compared to about 64 on the Adidas Cybersonic, which is really a testament to ASIC's running technology because that's where flight foam comes from and its ability to store potential energy, release it into kinetic energy because this shoe not even having an internal shank is able to pop off the ground with so much more magnitude versus some other shoes which may actually have an internal shank or a rigid beam inside of them. But with that little caveat out of the way, that does bring me to the second leg of the universal rating system, which is bounce and shock absorption. Now for bounce, I'm 
giving them a four out of five because like I said, the flight foam does really kind of get up off the ground really well on court. On the bounce test, it did do pretty well. It's just that underfoot, it really kind of comes to life. Now shock absorption, I am gonna give them a five out of five just because of the way that external shank really takes energy and is able to absorb it throughout the entire body of the shoe, the entire periphery of the shoe. So not one spot on the shoe is gonna have a point of failure. So no matter if it's the first time out of the box or you've been using these things for four, five, six months, these shoes are still gonna give you consistent shock absorption. So it's more the shoe's consistency versus out of the box stats that really do it for me on bounce and shock absorption. And that does bring me to today's sponsor, which is Power Step. And I thought Power Step was a really great integration to today's video because number one, the Gel Resolution 9s take orthotics so much better than their previous models did. You can fit them in there so much easier. As well as because the Gel Resolution 9 has an external scaffold holding the midsole foam up. So if you throw a pair of Power Steps in there, which have just the best arch support of any over-the-counter orthotic and most custom orthotics that I've ever seen, you can kind of get the best of both worlds. The external truss on the Gel Resolution 9 as well as that really great contouring and broad arch support on the power steps so if you're looking for an orthotic for kind of max arch support and the most arch contour you can get uh, these are really the best on the market right now and pairing them with a shoe like the gel resolution 9 kind of brings everything full circle kind of brings everything together you get the crazy arch contour as well as that really great scaffolding around your foot kind of making them kind of an ideal fit for each other and so if you do want to pick a pair of power steps up I will leave a link in the description below all right, back to the video. Now the outsole tread of the Gel Resolution 9 to me was kind of like a Jekyll and Hyde. I thought I was gonna experience one thing, experience something kind of almost completely different. Now if you look here, you still get these really aggressive pivot points here under the ball of your foot, lateral foot, and up on the tip of your toes. But then you also get this kind of modified razor pattern. It's a really flat type tread, kind of some modified herringbone here in the heel, which does allow for really efficient movement as well as pivoting. Now what I noticed on the treads on these is that they gripped so much better than I thought they would. I thought they would be much more of a sliding first shoe, kind of like Nike Vapor Pro 2, Nike Vapor 11, whereas these are kind of right in the middle. These things will lay down traction if you want them to. And if you are a super aggressive mover and you do slide really aggressively, they will kind of give in and slide, but you do have to be a little bit more of an advanced slider to get that sliding out of them. Uh, usually with an air channel in the shoe, if it goes all the way through, it's gonna allow more sliding. However, this one kind of forks in the road. And what I noticed on that is it allowed more pivoting grip when I was going side to side. And I did find that the tackiness of this rubber was just a little bit more than some others in this ultra durability class of rubbers. And looking at the speed ratio of the Gel Resolution 9, taking into account its weight in ounces versus its bound to get a ratio of 2.1, which is kind of right in the middle of the speed ratios for shoes. Remember, these are a little bit heavier. They're not the Solution Speed FF2. And if you look at a shoe like the Nike Vapor 11, Nike Vapor Pro 2, they actually have a slightly higher speed ratio than the Gel Resolution 9 because because of that four foot zoom air unit, I'll have to look at the rest of the shoe because the rubber is so bottom heavy. They don't grip as well as some other shoes do. And their amplitudes on the accelerometer aren't nearly as high. You kind of got to take that into consideration. However, for a shoe in the Gel Resolution 9's weight class, still a pretty decent speed ratio. And so speaking of those numbers versus how they act on court, that brings me to number four in the universal rating system, which is speed. Now, I, this I kind of went back and forth on these. However, given how crazy the launch is on these shoes, as well as how efficiently flight foam holds on to potential energy and allows you to release it as kinetic energy, you know, these shoes kind of get faster the longer you put them on. So I am gonna give them a four out of five for speed. Honestly, the only thing taking them down a point on speed is their weight. And on the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 second tie Grit sandpaper, shocking nobody, not even a millimeter of damage on these. This is that AHAR rubber from ASIC, so there is an abrasion resistance built into the rubber, as well as the durometer on these is 20.5, so it is a super hard rubber compound. And I do believe there actually is an outsole durability guarantee on this as well. And so for number five on the URS durability, of course, these are gonna be a five out of five. Honestly, the first thing that's probably gonna start to wear on these are the shoelaces. I'd say if you're gonna get these, you're buying them for the long haul. And getting into the fit of the Gel Resolution 9, a little surprising, you know, these were a little more forgiving in width than the forefoot versus the eight. So I'd say a narrow and medium foot and go true to size. And a 2E, I think you probably can just still go true to size, especially because then you can kind of take advantage of the slip knot here in the lacing system, as well as the enhanced lockdown of the shoe. And if you are someone who is an ankle sprainer, because this Dyna wall out here is so long, goes all the way out to the forefoot, all the way to the rear foot, these things really can stop you from rolling over. I noticed when I was just trying to pivot on these,
knees really hard on one foot, this shoe would just not buckle over. If you are somebody with heel pain, I think they're fine. However, because that flight from under here is a little dense right underfoot, right underneath that gel, you may want to throw an orthotic in there. And so that super smooth integration I just did does bring me to the next leg of the universal rating system, which is comfort and support. And for comfort, I'm going to give these a four out of five. The only thing really taking them down a point is number one in the heel. The foam is very dense. It's not uncomfortable by any means, but it's not super plush like it could be if the gel was kind of right underfoot. I mean, I know why they do that because they don't want it to bottom out quicker, as well as the lace line is a little bit low in the uppers. So if you are somebody with a really high arched foot, they are going to take eh, maybe one, two, three times of playing them to break them in before you kind of seat down on them. So that's really the only thing taking them down a point. For support, these are getting a five out of five for me. Just gives such good medial support, gives such amazing lateral support. The pivot points in the forefoot, especially with the slip knot there on the forefoot, just give you such incredible pivoting power. Now, in terms of playability of the Joe Resolution 9, you know, I'm not really sure what else you could want in a shoe. They have tremendous snap from number one static stance and number two from when you're really being pushed wide. They really have a really good pushback on court. So, you know, I would say if these aren't a five out of five, I'm not sure what shoe is. And honestly, the egg on my face is that I was ready to give all the love to the Court FF3. I was ready to kind of be just feeling mediocre about these. And so I think the word of the day for me, the Gel Resolution 9 is just surprising. I was just so surprised at you know, how much more comfortable they were than previous versions, you know, kind of how much better they were off the first step than some of the previous versions on these. I, I will say, if you're someone that does pride yourself going in a lot of really odd angles and having to get from one end of the baseline to the other, there is no better shoe out there right now. I think the Dyna Wall combined with the flight foam in there just makes these shoes such quick side to side moving shoes and being able to catch grip when you need to and slide when you need to as well, just really makes these a shoe to kind of play all the odd angles, play a really all court game or play a really aggressive retrieving game as well. Or when you really need a shoe to kind of get you out some awkward situations or get you a lot of speed when your weight is moving one direction you needed to go the other and, and honestly they, they really took the best parts of the gel resolution 8 made some really small tweaks to them and, and made them a shoe that i think pretty much every foot type can find a good playing shoe in but of course love to hear your thoughts on the gel resolution 9 are you looking to pick a pair of these up are you going more for the ff3 or another shoe completely let me know in the comments down below and if you want to see the rest of the best brand new shoes that have been coming out recently in the tennis space and they have been coming out fast and furious make sure you click into this playlist up above and subscribe down below respect your rubber and foam i'll see you in the next one